John Deere, owner of Adorable Ideas. Today I want to cover some basic hooping techniques. And these are techniques that I and my family have developed over the years when we were in the commercial industry. We used to have people who would ha be at hooping stations for over eight hours a day and that was their primary job because really the quality of your design starts with how well your material and your stabilizer is hooped before you put it on the machine. Now most of the hoops that I've seen in the home market today are actually rectangular and that really was a little bit of a mystery to me when I came into the home market because commercially most of our hoops were actually round and a round hoop makes a lot more sense because the material is being held securely around all of the edges almost like a drum it's drum tight when you're talking about a rectangular hoop you have four corners that are actually held securely and then all of these straight areas that's where you have a tendency to actually have your designs pull a little bit and cause puckering and misregistration now the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the thickness of the fabric. If I take any type of fabric and I fold it over one time and then I place it between my finger and my thumb and I just give it a little bit of pressure, I don't want to squeeze too tightly, but that gives me a visual gauge of how thick that fabric is. So the thinner the actual material, as I turn it over and I place it between my thumb and my finger, the space there will become a little bit thinner. And I use that as sort of as a, a visual guideline as far as how I want to pre-adjust my hoop. Pre-adjusting your hoop means that when you hoop properly, you'll actually do it right the first time. You won't be playing with tightening it up after the fact and causing hoop burn within your material. So if I looked at my felt and I've given that little gauge of how thick it is, then I will take the opening of my hoop and I'll pull on that corner until I see the space directly in between there when I pull. And that's how I will adjust my hoop. I'll separate it a little bit more for thicker fabrics, and I'll actually tighten it more for thinner fabrics. And that'll give me an idea of how much space I need within my hoop. Now that I've adjusted the bottom part of my hoop based on the thickness of the material, I'm going to make sure that I put it down onto my surface so that this separation area of the hoop is at the top front of my hooping area. Because when I take the top part of my hoop, I'm going to be pushing it forward and down as I, as I actually hoop the material. That's going to allow this area to separate first and make sure that it has the, the widest area possible and then it's going to push in place. The idea is you don't want to be fighting with the hoop. It shouldn't be really difficult to put it in, but it shouldn't fall into place too easily as well. So once I have my hoop in place, I'm going to take my stabilizer, put my stabilizer over top of my hoop, take my material, place that over top as well and this is where I make sure that everything is lined up nice and straight and then taking the top part of my hoop I'm going to again push down and forward make sure that my material is kind of nice and flat out of the way and then I'll push forward and down in one swift motion and as I said there should be a bit of resistance but you shouldn't be fighting with it I can now take my material and just pull it so that it's uh, you know kind of drum tight within the hoop I don't want to stretch it too much within the hoop so that I you know sort of affect the grain of the fabric but once it's in place I'm going to take those corners and I'm just gonna push them into place and you'll feel again a little bit of resistance but after I'm done, you're going to see that this has a drum-like appearance. It's nicely uh, you know, hooped within that area. It's a, a tight hooping, and you know that your design is going to sew successfully on the machine. 